Hi all, welcome to another video of the subject power system analysis uh, based on the KTU syllabus and we are on module 3 and today we are going to learn the basics of the load flow studies and the different types of buses we are using in the uh, power system. Okay, so the load flow studies involves the solution of the power system network under steady state conditions. We are dealing with the steady state conditions here. So the solution is obtained by considering certain inequality constraints imposed on node voltages and reactive power of generators. So the main information obtained from a load flow study are the magnitude and phase angle of the voltage at each bus and the real and reactive power flowing in each line. Okay, see, so these are the uh, informations we have there is the quantities we are obtained from the load flow study so the load flow study of a power system is essential to decide the best operation of the existing system and for planning the future expansion of the system so it is very essential for designing a new power system okay so for analysis of balance systems single phase equivalent circuit of power systems such as impedance diagram is adequate so we have already learned how to uh, convert a single line diagram into an impedance diagram in the first module and all. So the, these are the main four steps of a load flow study. So the first step is representation of the system by single line diagram. And second one is determining the impedance diagram using the information in single line diagram. And third one is the formulation of network equations. And fourth one is the solution of network equation. So four steps are there for a load flow study. And we are, when you are coming to the types of buses, so in a power system, you know, the buses are meeting points of various components. Okay. So uh, we can draw, we have already uh, seen different types of single line diagrams. Okay. Here you can see two soldiers are connected to a bus and uh, uh, the load is, okay, load draw uh, power from another bus. So these are the uh, buses. And we know the generators will feed energy to buses and loads will draw energy from buses. So in the network of a power system, the buses becomes nodes as, and so a voltage can be specified for each bus. Therefore, each bus in a power system is associated with the four quantities. So the four quantities are real power that is P, okay, reactive power Q and the magnitude of the voltage mode V and the phase angle of the voltage delta. Okay. So these are the four quantities, okay, four quantities in a power system that is for a, uh, considering a bus. So in a load flow problem, uh, out of these four quantities, two quantities are specified for each bus and the remaining two quantities are obtained by solving the load flow equations, okay. So mainly three types of buses are there, okay. First one is the load bus, it is also called a PQ bus. The second one is the generator bus, it is called a voltage controlled bus or PE bus. Next one is a slack bus. It is it can be uh, called as swing bus or uh, reference bus. Okay, so three buses are there. So in that uh, the count is for a load bus. The count is specified are uh, real and reactive power PQ. So we have to find okay uh, using the load flow study we have to find the magnitude of the voltage and phase angle of the voltage. But in the case of generator bus P and the magnitude of the voltage is specified. We have to find Q and delta. And for slack bus, mode V and uh, delta are specified. We have to find a PQ. Okay. We have to obtain P and Q. Where P is the PG minus PD. That is PG is the real power generated by the generator. And uh, PD is the real power drawn by the loads. And Q is the QG minus QD. QG is the reactive power uh, generated by the generator. And uh, uh, corresponding QD will be the reactive power uh, drawn by the loads okay so uh, the load bus when we are talking about the load bus so the bus is called load bus when real and the reactive component of power are specified for the bus that is we have already seen in the uh, table itself so the load flow equations can be solved to find the magnitude and phase of the bus voltages so in a load bus the voltage is allowed to vary within permissible limits that is for example uh, plus uh, five percentage okay so plus or minus five percentage there will be a minus sign here okay plus or minus five percentage and when we are talking about the generator bus we know that the bus is called the generator bus when real power and the magnitude of the bus voltage are specified for the bus then the load flow equation can be solved to find the reactive power and the phase of bus voltage Usually for generator buses, reactive power limits will be specified. Okay. Limits limits will be specified here. 
and for slack bus the bus is called slack bus if the magnitude and phase of bus are bus voltages are specified for the bus so the slack bus is a reference bus normally we are using that as a reference bus so it can be derived from the generator bus itself okay so one of the generator bus is actually converting to the slack bus in the process okay we can see it later so actually the need of a slack bus is that basically the power system has only two types of buses they are uh, load bus and generator bus so in these buses only power injected by the generators and power drawn by the loads are specified that is pg and pd or qg and qd okay but the power loss in transmit lines are not accounted so in a power system the total power generated will be equal to we know that it is a sum of uh, power consumed by the loads and the losses so we can write the equation as sum of complex power generator is equal to sum of complex power of loads plus uh, total power loss in transmission line so we can find the total power loss in transmission line by rearranging this equation okay so the transmission line losses can be estimated only if the real and reactive power of all buses are known so the powers in the buses will be known only after solving the load flow equation that is uh, we, we can find the value of p and q okay powers only after solving the load flow equations so for the reasons the real and reactive power of one of the generator bus is not specified and this bus is called the slack bus so it is assumed that the slack bus generates the real and reactive power required for transmission line losses so hence for a slack bus the magnitude and phase of bus voltage are specified and real and reactive powers are obtained through the load flow solution okay so uh, this is actually the need of a slack bus so i hope all of you understand the topics well the, the different types of buses uh, and the basics of the load flow study as well so thank you